Hey everyone, I'm Matt and welcome to my driveway. For this week's video, I've got a 3D printing project that I'm going to share with you. In fact, I'm going to talk about 3D printing in general, but uh, I've got one project that I'm going to take you along on and I'll show you some of the other projects that I've completed in the past. Now, for those of you that have followed along for a while, you know that for work, I drive on logging roads a lot, sometimes hundreds of miles a day. It's hard on everything. I've been using this wireless fast charge cradle right here. It's motorized. Uh, you put the phone in there and these arms close on the phone and hold it into place. But the factory uh, mounting ball broke the other day as I was going down some really rough washboard. So I decided to up my phone holding game. I spent some time in Fusion 360 and I designed this mount right here. I 3D printed it in ABS so it would be nice and strong. This ball I designed and 3D printed in a separate print. It's held into place with a captive nut on the back and I can slide it back and forth. I'll tighten it down with a Allen wrench once I've got the final position. And then I also designed this tower right here that also fits right there in that same uh, same slot. And that meant I didn't have to throw out this wireless charging cradle. Now this ball right here is gonna be used for this quad lock wireless charging head because I do already have a quad lock case on my phone. This mount right here, I designed to fit right here and be held into place with the factory screws. Yeah, and then obviously I can set this ball wherever I want. And then this tower goes wherever I want. And I will probably have both charging systems here in the truck. The quad lock one can be a little bit of a nuisance to lock and unlock. So for normal driving, I think I'll just use this one, but. And then of course I got two, so if I've got a passenger with me, they can use the wireless one as well. Now before we get to this, I thought I would maybe take you around and show you the other things that I have designed and 3D printed around the house. This is definitely one of my favorite designs right here. And I came up with this and designed it. Each of these right here is an interlocking nine inch long piece. And then of course I have end pieces which are rounded over. So. I can make these rack systems as wide as I want by continually printing center sections and then uh, I just have to have one left and one right end section. At least at the time of the filming of this video I've only got three sizes. I've got one for uh, these caulk tubes, one for grease, and then one for standard spray paint cans. Now I've got a bunch of automotive spray paint, the small duplicolor like body uh, paint match cans. And so I'm going to do another one for those. And then I'm going to do an additional one uh, for holding like grinder wheels and things like that. And I'm going to try and come up with some more ideas. It's cool because they're, the back pieces are modular. They're, they use a dovetail joint. And so I can interchange different sizes with each other. Uh, and each one just takes a few hours to print. So anyway, I thought it was a cool design. I haven't put it up yet, but for the router out in my shop, I 3D printed this holder right here, and I'm going to screw it up high up there on a post or one of the girts or something like that up on the wall. So yeah, that one was not my design. I downloaded that one off uh, somewhere off the internet, so someone else came up with that. Kudos to whoever that was. I'm going to be hanging more of these uh, high bay UFO LED lights in my shop, and I designed and printed these ABS uh, eyes. This is just a support piece here in the center. Oops. So I can uh, clip each of these lights onto these support eyes. And I've actually made a lot of those. I'm using them in several different applications. Something fell on this LED light stand years ago, and I made this uh, 3D printed mount to replace the broken piece. Um, I don't have it screwed on there right now, but it's worked so well. I've never had reason to actually try and find the official replacement part for it. I designed and 3D printed these neat little Suzuki hood bumpers right here out of ABS. I attached them with stainless fasteners over a year ago and they still look perfect. On my V-Strom, I designed and 3D printed this power socket mount right here. And that holds my USB charger and voltmeter. About two years ago, I designed and 3D printed this uh, Ryobi power adapter. So you put a Ryobi 18 volt battery, it clips right in there. It's got a 30 amp uh, 12 volt power converter on it. And then I've got a standard 12 volt power socket on the end. 
So anything that you can plug into a cigarette lighter socket, you can power with a Ryobi battery. Works pretty good. Now I can't exactly take credit for this one. Someone else designed this, but uh, I printed this many years ago, but it holds one of these bug zapper LED lights and a uh, Ryobi battery plugs into the bottom of this one as well. <clears throat> and then it's got a USB adapter right there. So you can, uh, when you go camping, you can take one Ryobi battery and use it to recharge a whole bunch of USB devices. And if it's a summer buggy season, you can put this bug zapper on the table and it gives you two things, light and a little bit of entertainment as the bugs get zapped. Showing you how disorganized I am in my shop. I haven't put these up yet, but these are helmet holders. So you screw these to the wall, just like this. And then the helmet sits right on top of that ball. And uh, I'm not taking credit for these. Someone else designed these. But uh, I had them up on, on the wall in my old shop for years. They work great. And so I brought them to my new shop. I just haven't put them up yet. All right, out here in the garage, I designed and printed this access panel cover for my Emporia View power monitoring system. Uh, when we bought this place, the box was surface mounted and there was wires everywhere. So I am correcting that. This is gonna be flush mounted right here, but I have not installed that yet because I'm waiting for drywall mode to dry. A little workout and cold plunge area. I designed and 3D printed these holders for the remotes for the receiver, for my projector, and for my powered uh, projection screen. And then a nifty little one for the skimmer for the cold plunge. Up here on the projector, uh, I've got some more of those little black eyes that I showed you earlier. That's what's holding the projector up. And then I designed uh, speaker mounts as well. These uh, speakers are mounted with some 3D printed brackets that uh, are adhered with some double-sided adhesive tape to the projector itself. It's a nice clean installation. Got some more of these uh, paint can brackets that I'm currently printing right now. Got a remote holder for the Chromecast. I didn't design this, someone else did. It's an excellent design, nice and clean. Printer's hard at work right now on one of my uh, paint can holders. Got a few various other things here that I've printed for other people. This is a, a tent heater adapter. You zip this into the uh, opening on the tent and hook your duct up to here for using the diesel heaters for tent heating. I 3D printed these fasteners for someone for his uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. And uh, these knobs are for uh, uh, an amplifier. Apparently they, uh, they're they easily lost and the replacements can't be purchased. So I designed these from scratch. Now I'll take just a second to talk about uh, 3D printers and 3D printing hardware. This is not some kind of comprehensive review of everything that's available out there. I haven't tried everything, but I have owned, I think, six or seven different 3D printers, and I've been, uh, you know, 3D printing for I don't know, seven years or so. So I have at least some experience with it. I do have a couple of 3D printers, but this is the one that uh, I use 99% of the time. This is a Bamboo Lab X1C Carbon uh, with the AMS system on it, so I can print. Uh, uh, this will actually do, I think, up to 16 colors. Uh, I only have one AMS unit, so just four colors in a single print uh, right now. But uh, you can add more of those AMS systems on there. And uh, I just, I, I love the Bamboo Labs printers. These things just, they work great. Uh, that's not to say that uh, someone else couldn't come out with something better, but at the time of the filming of this video, yeah, I really think that the best value is pretty much in any Bamboo Labs 3D printer. So, uh, yeah, that's my, that's mine, a uh, printer of choice, the Bamboo Labs X1C Carbon. I'm talking a little bit about materials. Again, if I wanted a comprehensive re review of all the materials that you can print in, this would go on for an hour. There's all sorts of specialty materials like glow-in-the-dark material and, and wood grain, uh, filament that's got wood grain in it, and... There's flexible material like hips. There's, you know, I, I mean, you could just go on forever. Uh, I will say that almost all of my prints are either done in ABS or PLA. I use PLA if I'm like, prototyping parts that I might not be using permanently or maybe some artistic stuff. And then I use ABS for almost everything else. The Bamboo Labs printer just prints really good with ABS. It adheres well to the bed, so I rarely have part failures. 
and uh, ABS is really strong. Uh, it's durable. It's got some some UV resistance to it, and uh, um, it works well in most of my applications. So black and white ABS is almost exclusively what I actually print parts in. any more problems here. I may need to increase the size of the ball on this thing just a little bit. Okay, we got that out of there. These uh, quad lock adapters come with two fasteners for this. One's a thumb wheel like this and the other one's an Allen wrench. I suppose if this was, uh, you know, on a motorcycle or something accessible, the Allen wrench would be preferable. Well, it's definitely charging. There's a little more motion there than I like, but uh, I've got some ideas to strengthen this thing up, so I may print another one. I have a feeling that this may break right here at the edge of the ball, but I don't need that much articulation because it's already pointed the correct direction. So I, I may do an updated one of these. There we go. So both of those work just fine. There is too much motion on that uh, ball right there. I have a feeling I'm going to need to print a slightly larger one of those. I can't really get it much tighter. I had another one of these wireless phone cradles and I decided to throw this one on here uh, just to see. It looks like they use the same ball on the back, so that's good to know. Now I can follow the same pattern and make one for the Samurai or something. And I decided I wanted to do something as far as cable management goes. I got an idea for uh, 3D printing some uh, cable clips to manage my cables right down the edge here so they're not uh, right in front of the stereo. So. I think I'm going to go make some of those. And I rotated this 90 degrees. That was uh, no problem to do with the Allen wrench. So I'm actually going to run back to the printer. I'm going to print this in, uh, we'll say, uh, maybe one millimeter larger diameter. I'm going to fix the weak point on this one. And then I'm going to print some cable management clips that I will adhere to this surface right here to kind of clean this up. All right, well, I've been running this system that I designed for about a week in my truck here, and it works great. I've been up in the woods a couple of times. These things are nice and secure. I haven't really had any issues, except this ball that I 3D printed on this end. You know, ABS tends to, like it feels a little bit greasy, and no matter how much I tighten this, I can still move this on that ball. Now that hasn't been a huge problem, it actually holds just fine even when I'm bouncing down rough roads. Where it becomes a problem is when I try to install or remove my phone, the whole assembly kind of moves a little bit and I just don't like that. So uh, I got to thinking a little bit and I realized that when I bought that, that uh, quad lock two inch arm, it came with this ball right here. And this is, it's not really harder, it just feels like grippy and rubbery sort of. So anyway, I decided I wanted to use this uh, it's got Quadlox kind of proprietary spline gear mount system on the bottom of it. So I spent a few minutes in Fusion, and I designed an adapter that fits on my little rail that's got that gear assembly on it. So this just pops right onto there. I did not have a number 10 bolt that was a countersink that was long enough to go all the way through this and bolt onto the rail on the bottom here. So I'm waiting for that to show up, but once it does, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just swap one ball for the other, and uh, then the system should 
hold into place quite nicely. So, so that uh, really brings us to the end of the video. Uh, just kind of showing you one potential use for 3D printing as well as some of the ones that I've already completed. So I uh, hope you guys found it useful. Um, just a side note, all of these designs, I don't try and sell any of them. I make them publicly available on Thingiverse. I will post a link to my Thingiverse page uh, in the video description here. So if you guys want any of this stuff, you have access to a 3D printer, it's all available for free. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on next week's video.